Ah, Mass Effect Andromeda, the game we fans of the original trilogy like to pretend doesn't exist. How many games are there in the Mass Effect series? Why, there are three of them. Andromeda? Never heard of ya. It's almost been seven years since the dumpster fire release of Mass Effect Andromeda, and in the past few years, people have been rediscovering the game. In a similar way to AC Unity, Andromeda has seen at least a little bit of a boost in its reputation. So were the haters wrong about this game? Is it actually a good game that's deserving of your time? That's what we're going to be diving into today. So here's the deal, man. I think Mass Effect Andromeda got a bad rap. It's not the worst game ever made or anything like that. However, that doesn't mean it's some kind of hidden gem masterpiece that you absolutely have to play. This does not mean the criticisms that the game received at launch weren't valid either. The game was unfinished and should have never been released in such a broken state. Bioware deserved to fail with this game. But now that all the bugs have been fixed, I think a lot of people will have fun with Andromeda. The game looks beautiful and the combat and build variety is incredibly fun. So let's take a look at some of the positive qualities of Andromeda first before getting into the things that no patch could save later in the video. The biggest contribution that Andromeda made to the franchise is a complete overhaul to the combat system. And many of the changes introduced in this game were a big W for Bioware. For starters, you are not locked into a rigid class choice for the entirety of the game. As you level up your character, you have the option to spend skill points in any category you like, allowing you to mix and match different skills and test different abilities. I played as an infiltrator or soldier for most of my time in the original trilogy, so there are a lot of biotic and tech abilities that I have hardly ever used. Andromeda was really my first foray into these skills, and I love testing out different playstyles as I continue to level up my character. Aside from build flexibility, Andromeda also introduced faster paced movement abilities for Rider. The jump jets, combined with various dash abilities, give Ryder the opportunity to cover great distances with rapid speed. In Mass Effect 1 and 2, we didn't even have a jump button. And in Mass Effect 3, the best we could do was a dodge roll. So this expanded moveset in Andromeda is much appreciated. There is also more verticality in the level design with multi-story structures in many of the battle arenas. This gives you an opportunity to use the jump jets to scale and gain an advantage over your foes by taking the high ground, or escaping quickly when a fight gets too hot. In the original trilogy, combat really took a backseat to the role-playing and storytelling aspects of the game. The combat was fun and serviceable, but far from the best part of those games. But in Andromeda, the combat stands out to me as the best part of the experience. This video is sponsored by Dragonair Silent Gods, an open-world western fantasy-themed strategy RPG that you definitely don't want to miss. Dragonair recently announced Phase 2 of its official collaboration with Dungeons & Dragons, and this phase features even greater rewards, richer game content, and upcoming events. With over 10 million downloads since its global launch last year, Dragonair has taken the RPG genre by storm with its rich tactical gameplay, dice rolls, character customization, dungeon battles, and exploration. After the iconic D&D characters Drizzt and Urtu made their appearance in the game, Dragonair Silent Gods will officially launch Phase 2 of the Dungeons & Dragons collaboration on February 23rd. Two legendary mages, Elminster Omar and Samaster, will be making their debut. Players can take part in a new collaboration story, embarking on a quest with Elminster to tackle a major threat in Adenthia. He'll travel to the Cult of the Dragon Fortress to battle Sam Master, the cult's leader and impersonator of the Child of Chaos. Dragonair is now available on Windows PC, Mac, Steam, and Epic Games, as well as both mobile platforms Android and iOS. Click on my link in the description to download the game right now and join D&D Legends in Dragonair. Exploration is another strong suit of Andromeda. Kind of. There's a honeymoon phase with the exploration in this game. The planets look gorgeous, owing to the excellent color renditions in the Frostbite engine. But after that initial wow factor wears off, you'll quickly realize that there's very little interesting content to discover on any of these worlds. Bioware took the Ubisoft slash Dragon Age Inquisition approach to quest content in Andromeda. The planets are filled to the brim with boring, forgettable fetch and kill quests that have no lasting impact on anything. I literally can't remember any of these quests specifically without going through my gameplay footage. 
and the gameplay loop of clearing vaults and checking things off a to-do list wears out its welcome very quickly. I'm an open world game junkie. I love these types of games and I've played pretty much every major open world action game or RPG that's come out since Skyrim. But Bioware just ain't on the cutting edge of this kind of game design. I think Bioware is at their best when they focus on creating a few small cities or zones for us to explore. This gives them more development resources to focus on what they are usually best at, creating compelling characters, stories, and meaningful choices for the player to explore. Unfortunately, in this pursuit of quantity over quality, a lot of the story elements and character development end up suffering massively in Andromeda. And this starts with the main character, Ryder. Ryder is a terrible protagonist. The legacy of Commander Shepard casts a long shadow on the Mass Effect franchise. And I don't envy the writers who were tasked with coming up with a new main character. But is this really the best they could do? Ryder is kind of a loser. He's insecure, cringy, unconfident, and no one respects him. He's regularly put down by authority figures from the Andromeda Initiative, and even his own squad mates will often walk out of the room when he's talking. Look, I can be cringy and insecure in my own time in real life. If I'm playing a video game, I want to be a Giga Chad, not some loser who nobody respects. I can somewhat appreciate what the devs were trying to do with Ryder when compared to Commander Shepard. In the OG trilogy, the protagonist already had a ton of street cred and was well respected by the Alliance military. So we don't really get to experience as much character development with Shepard since the commander gained many of their accolades before the events of the first game. In Andromeda, they tried to give us an origin story that charted Ryder's growth into a leader, thrust into a position by pure nepotism and incompetence on the part of his dumbass father. Why couldn't you share the helmet, by the way? Ryder has to earn the respect of his peers and prove that he is capable of colonizing uncharted worlds and dealing with major threats through his deeds alone. But understanding this doesn't make it any more fun to play as Ryder, though. They could have told this story without having so many characters openly disrespect Ryder. Nobody asked for the Mass Effect Humiliation Fetish Edition. But Ryder aside, I will admit that Bioware did a decent job with the squad mates in Andromeda. They're no Normandy crew, but there are some interesting and likable characters in this game. Except for Liam, but we don't talk about Liam. My favorites were Drac, Vetra, Korra, Jaw, and maybe PB. Still can't decide whether she's more cool or annoying. This crew still isn't as good as the OG trilogy squad mates, but to be fair, many of those characters have the benefit of two to three games of development. If we were to judge characters like Tally or Garrus on Mass Effect 1 alone, they wouldn't be nearly as liked, because a lot of their best moments happen in 2 or 3, as their relationship with Shepard deepens. Andromeda has some moments that remind me of the old Bioware. My favorite moment in the game was the movie night that you have with your crew. It captured a vibe similar to the Citadel DLC for me, but most of these moments are a flash in the pan, buried in an experience that is overall pretty lackluster. But where Andromeda really starts to lose me is how they handled choice and consequence in the story. I'm not going to rehash the whole story in this video, but there will be some spoilers in this section. Choice and consequence has always been a big part of RPGs, especially the Mass Effect trilogy. Part of the reason this series is named Mass Effect is that the player is presented with big choices that could have a massive effect on the galaxy. <laughs> Get it, Mass Effect? On a loading screen in Mass Effect Andromeda, you will see a message that says, Ryder's decisions can have lasting consequences. Choose carefully. Sadly, this really isn't the case. Most choices you will be presented with in Andromeda have no lasting impact on anything. In the main quest, Hunting the Archon, you need to choose whether to save the Krogan Scouts or the Salarian Pathfinder. If you save the Scouts, then the Pathfinder dies and she is replaced with another Salarian NPC. Director Tan expresses disappointment at your choice, but then moves on. Instead, if you save the Salarian Pathfinder, then the scouts die, and Drac is mad at you for a while, but he eventually gets over it. In the end, the game is the same regardless of which outcome you choose. When you place your first outpost on Eos, you're asked whether to make the focus military or scientific. This is presented as a really big deal that will speak volumes about the intentions of the initiative. But in the end, it doesn't matter whether you choose military or scientific because it only changes a few lines of dialogue, nothing else. 
Either way, you'll still have a group of NPCs protesting against you on the Nexus because their family members are still in cryo because you chose to place a military outpost or a scientific outpost. It's even the exact same group of NPCs protesting regardless of your choice. So I guess the guy leading the protest must have had a military daughter while Gam Gam worked in the bio lab. You're screwed either way. On Kadara, you can either save Sloane Kelly and keep her in power, or let Reyes kill her and put him in power instead. Either way, you get a new outpost on Kadara, so it just comes down to which character you like better or dislike less. The only decision that had any real impact was your choice about the Remnant Drive Core on Elodin. If you keep the Drive Core, you don't gain the Krogan as allies, and you can't put an outpost on Elodin. Whereas if you give the drive to Morda, you gain Krogan support and a new outpost. But even that isn't really a big deal because what do the outposts really give you aside from maybe one or two fetch quests, a couple of prefab buildings, and some generic NPCs, most of whom you can't speak to anyway. It's possible that Bioware had future plans for some of these decisions, like your selection of the ambassador at the end of the game, to have more meaningful impact on the sequel. But seven years later, we still don't have a sequel to this game, and we might never get a continuation of the Andromeda plotline. So I'm judging the game for what it is, not what it hypothetically could have been in someone's fever dream. If Bioware wants to win back fans to the Mass Effect franchise, they need to reintroduce meaningful story choices in the next game. It's a core part of the franchise that sets it apart from many other RPGs. Mass Effect is one of the only franchises where your choices can have an impact on the story in subsequent games. So at the end of the day, Mass Effect Andromeda is a halfway decent game with fun combat and exploration. However, it's a major step down from the original trilogy and lost the plot on what Mass Effect was really about, role-playing as a powerful, respected soldier making galaxy-shaking choices with your homies. If you're a fan of the Mass Effect series, then it's worth it to check out Andromeda if you have the time. I would recommend waiting to pick up the game when it's on sale, though, because it sure as hell ain't worth $40. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.